I think I get it now. I want to think of the bore. When we transitioned this, this had been a gravel filled greenhouse. And the first thing that happened was Rocco kept chickens in it for about four or five months. So it's okay. got a basis of chicken manure. That's probably where all those nutrients are coming from, right? Okay, well, it's only, it's, it's not got high nitrates or high ammonium, which mm -hmm. it's growing it like should. it does. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's definitely got twice the sulfur of the other one that we looked at, uh, mm -hmm. the A2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, good. Where it's falling down, and you really ought to consider this if you're growing tomatoes, is manganese. Okay. What's the uh, source? What uh, well, I'd use manganese sulfate. Manganese sulfate, okay. And, uh, and we don't have too much sulfur. Already. Basically, with your certification programs, if your test shows you need it, then it's allowable. Okay. So magnesium uh, sulfate. In fact, it ought to be required. If the test shows you need it, you should put it on there. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Basically, your biodynamic preparations are tools to organize the processes in nature. If you don't have something there, it's pretty hard to organize it. Yeah, it <laughs> makes more sense to get the balance and the minerals right first rather than start spraying, spraying preps blindly, right? Well, you should spray preps first. But then everything else should be aimed at putting what's needed there because the organization is not going to organize it if it's not there. I don't think it's very effective, though, to spray it first if you don't have your... Oh, look, biology. I spray it first, I spray it second, I spray okay. it last, I spray <laughs> it as, right. as often right. as I can manage to spray <laughs> it. <laughs> Okay. You know, to use biodynamics just once or twice or three times during the growing season is, I don't know, I scratch my head at that thinking. Anytime I'm putting any, anything out with irrigation, with a, a soil drench, with a foliar, and just while it's raining, putting it out with the map and a radionic instrument, then I'm, I'm always putting the biodynamic preparations in with everything. So if I was to count, I'd have to count up all the different occasions, including my rain treatments and everything that's with the full farm map. I'm putting biodynamic preparations out left, right, and center, and on Sundays and blue moons. And <laughs> We're way behind on that one. Yeah, well, we I mean, Sundays, how? But not the blue moons. <laughs> <laughs> so that was about what you saw. The main thing missing in that one was the. I'm just worried about the. It seemed like the nutrients were just off the charts for a lot of them. Well, there were some. The there were some good too, levels. Right? There were some good levels. Magnesium was super high. That's what I worried about. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's not really all that good. Potassium looks like see how the potassium right under that the longest line is magnesium mm -hmm. right underneath it is potassium over here mm -hmm. and it's looking like it's deficient it's not a red line but it's deficient uh -huh. but if you looked so you over here the at the potassium paper? no i wouldn't use any potassium at all okay. because over here on the total test there's soaringly high levels oh, okay. of potassium so it's about availability yeah, it's about availability, and you get the biology working, and you tap mm -hmm. right into this, mm -hmm. and you won't ever have any excess, which you put it on as a salt fertilizer, and you always have that initial excess condition mm -hmm. before it disperses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was showing a farmer, this was a banana farmer, it doesn't make any difference what kind, though, because I was showing him, look, when you put out your fertilizer that was calculated to fertilize this much soil, you put it out on the surface, and as it dissolved in, it was six times too concentrated in the first inch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think that did to the first inch of the biology of the soil? Where That's of where most is. of it is. Yeah. So your first two inches are going to be actually poisoned by too high a concentration of these salts and that's then i had like, then yeah. i had now this is the same banana farmer and i'm seeing him it's like three years later and he's saying man he says i found out something really really cool he says i've hired a guy on 
to spread fertilizer. That's his whole job. And he says he's putting it out at half the rate that I used to put it at. And I'm getting far better results. He discovered that. He thought he had discovered it. I told him and he'd forgotten about it. <laughs> that happens all the time, right? I have, uh, I have people well, tell me something that they discovered that I taught them. I, didn't, time I, I did not argue with him. It was his discovery. Uh, yeah, that's and, the best way to get him to do it. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, Once he's, they own it, they keep it, right? That's exactly right. right. Yeah. That's what I wanted him to do in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. That's great. That's the best teachers when they Oh the man, class, that's you know? right. He taught himself. Yep. And uh, maybe I had some little influence in there to, you know, to get him to think about it. Mm -hmm. But he discovered it on his own in the best way, you know. Wow. <laughs> Instead of spreading fertilizer once a month, he spread it twice a month. Mm -hmm. Had put a guy to work doing it, you know. That was his job, just going around and spreading it. And it worked. It paid for that guy and a lot more. Yeah, I tried to teach him, <laughs> I tried to, teach him to put a little bit of compost out and just a little bit of the fertilizer, and they get a whole lot more of an effect out of it. You know? Yeah, but you have to do it more frequently. Yeah, see? Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and he's doing it more frequently. He's doing, I couldn't have thought of a better program than what he came up with. <laughs> <laughs> Should we look out here in this garden? Yeah, sure. Oh boy, lemongrass grows great in these parts. Yep, yep. Lemongrass and ginger. Yeah, we're we're turned on about the ginger. We're gonna put it between our tomatoes in the greenhouses. Yeah, <sighs> totally. Yeah. yeah, I sent everybody the video you did on the ginger. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, quite yeah. excited. Now, does turmeric have a similar effect? Yep, turmeric uh -huh. and ginger grow in a very similar fashion. Mm -hmm. Ginger grows like this. Mm -hmm. Turmeric grows like that. Mm -hmm. Ginger comes up and gets about this tall, maybe. And if it gets, see how this one here, its leaves will tend to curl at mm -hmm. the midday because it actually has to limit its photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. It's an understory, it's an understory. that, yeah. that yeah. evolved mm -hmm. in the Malaysian rainforest. Yep. And so it's very efficient in its photosynthesis. And it has to actually limit that. That's why we're in, putting them between in, tomatoes in full sun. Yeah, seems like the perfect combination. You know, they'll go deep for the tomatoes. And oh, and and tomatoes. this yeah. is a super actinomycete plant. Mm -hmm. It's just got such a healthy effect on the soil. Mm -hmm. And the actinomycetes, you might be aware, are the source of most of the antibiotics used in medicine. Mm -hmm. So they're the mopper-uppers, the cleaner-uppers of all the nasties in the soil. So, boy, that's just perfect, a perfect idea to do it with tomatoes. Yeah. They need it. You yeah, think it would work it. with corn? Huh? You think it would work well with corn? And they're too much similar plants. They need this. See, the, the this one is a silica plant, mm -hmm. and so is corn. Mm -hmm. We still have some. Let's get it. This one them. isn't going to compete well against any grasses. Mm -hmm. yeah, corn doesn't like growing. grass as a weed. It's one of the weeds corn doesn't like is grass. The corn kind of is a grass. Isn't it? Well, yeah, that's right. Is, it yeah. doesn't need another grass. Sure. Yeah. You know, soybeans, it just says, bring it on. Come on, baby. Yeah, they're great companions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I want to show you something when we get back over to number one before we leave. But I have to first say, <clears throat> I put these Gorios and daisies out here years ago because I love the genetic variation and all. Yep. But when I put them out, I was coming from a place <clears throat> where where they grew, the flowers got this big. And I was really disappointed yep. that they didn't get like this. And now there's one growing in the greenhouse. We'll take a look at it. It's like that. this. And the reason, I think, is because it's grown in gravel. And the last place they were grown was at the edge of a driveway, and gravel was being pushed in. Okay. So, yeah. Silica again. Yeah. Boy, that's a beautiful shiso plant. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, and your valerian there, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it likes it there. Yeah, it's I, been there a while, yeah. Yeah, I found that valerian didn't like its feet to its feet to dry out. Yep, no, well, that's like our whole garden. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Whole yeah. Garden doesn't dry out. yeah, boy, the whole end over there with valerian would work, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it, 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 it does like that. It grows in the ditches out in eastern Oregon. It grows wild in the ditches. It's a... Uh, out there, it's considered a weed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and oh, I've, weeds. I, yeah, well, <laughs> weeds are great plants. They're usually master plants. Yeah, right, totally. <laughs> Stephen Howard Booner says that elder, elderberries are called elderberries because they were considered the elder flower. Mm. Do you reckon it makes seeds? You know, I've never tried to collect seed, but I wouldn't see why it wouldn't. You know, it's been here I've, long enough. I have seen seeds oh, for sale. Oh, it must make seeds because that's a volunteer over there. Oh, it may, yeah. 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 Yeah, but I've, I've never, in seeing it bloom like this, I've never seen the seeds it was mm -hmm. making. Mm -hmm. I wonder what it'd take to get seeds off of it. I like this plant because if you're pickling ginger and you pack a bunch of these leaves in there, it gives it mo not only the coloring but the flavor. I think that might be a seed. What do you think? That's awful tiny. But there's a little when I've bought little seeds, round they're bigger at the than bottom. that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Maybe not. I think just the remains of a I flower. I think there's bigger seeds than that. Uh -huh. I just haven't seen them. Uh -huh. I've, I bought seeds and they they were bigger. That's seed, isn't it? There may be seeds in there. They look, they're all like, regular like size. That one yeah, right there right, yeah, looks yeah. like it's a seed. Yeah, I think there's seeds there. I think there are seeds there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yep, yeah. yep, okay. Yep. Well, <sighs> let's get them. <laughs> Give them a chance well, to it, it's, it's such oh, an I, I important plant. And it's one of these plants, like if I... Uh, I'm out on the road and I get home late at night and I've drunk a bunch of coffee. Then I'll take and get ready for bed and take my valerian flower juice bottle, get an eyedropper and down the hatch and I'll be right by the bed and I fall in and I fall asleep. See, it is my, it's a major piece of my regime if I get sciatica. Because I can take this, oh, it's okay. not only going to help me sleep, but it's feeding the nerve. You know, it's a nervine. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's so it's just like people say, oh, it's too strong. It's like if I got sciatica, I want something strong. Because yeah. you, know? you can't sleep with sciatica, but I take wow. this and I can sleep, you know. Wow. It would be really important for that. It's yeah. It's a really important plant. I don't use it all the time, but when <coughs> I need it, boy, I'm really glad it's there. <laughs> a friend of mine, she was having so menstrual cramps. She had terrible menstrual cramps. And I said, well, Carol, let me get you some valerian root. And I dug around, got some valerian root and rubbed it off clean. Says, here, chew that. Wow. <laughs> it just relieved her so she, much. Did yeah. she fall asleep? Oh, no, no, she didn't fall asleep. But, but she re relieved all her, uh, her menstrual cramps. It was really Amazing. great for that. By chewing on the root. By chewing on the root. Oh, It'll numb your tongue. I imagine that's way strong, <laughs> chewing on the root. Yeah. There's some power to that. So this no kidding. is just starting to get hit with downy mildew. Um, it, yeah, it, your horsetail horse would tail, be the yep, deal. Yep. And it would get so much darker. Mm -hmm. The horsetail, it would get dark. Yeah, well, we got to get on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can oh, spray I too. So. Yeah. What's interesting to me is that all of these really bad diseases, in my experience, they don't show up until the plant's starting to go to flower. You know, once it starts to go to flower, boom, that's when the disease comes in. Yeah, because the plant is losing its... It's, it's putting its energy yeah. making seed. It doesn't, you know, that's right, it's it losing its tension. Anymore. Racing to the finish, yeah. yeah. What do you call this one? Um, that is, um, it's the Ch Cherokee herb. Sochin. 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 This is a, Cher a Cherokee green, pot green. Yellow, I've eaten it. Flower. I've eaten it before. Yeah, yellow cone flower. I mean, actually, it's okay here, but it really prefers to be in dappled, you know? It's not as much a big, a full sun one. You know? It likes the dappled. Yeah, it likes light. the edges of things. But I love it. A little it's bit of shade. Thing. A lot of people don't like the taste of it, but I like It's pretty taste. strong, yeah. yeah. Well, the theory is that you're supposed to throw the pot, the water, you're supposed to boil them and throw the water off. Oh, okay. Because it's related to echinacea, and you don't need that much medicine all the time, you know? If well, you're looking at... Japanese beetles here, mm -hmm. massacring your okra. Yep. Yeah, they're out there doing a little damage, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, and that's another one that could benefit greatly from the horsetail. Mm -hmm. And it toughens them up enough mm -hmm. that I think you'd see a lot less bug damage. You know, it's pretty hilarious because I just <laughs> wrote to my entomologist friend, Dr. McBug, we call him Dick McDonald, and said that we haven't had much Japanese beetle damage in it for years, and then this year I'm seeing it again. <laughs> I've like seen it. Uh, say that kind of stuff, it's like, 
<laughs> yeah, don't say it because it's a curse. It likes smart weed, you know? Boy, boy, Japanese beetles love smart weed. Yep. Good fish food. So you could also ash these though, right? That yep. would work. Yeah, 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 you could. Yeah. Uh, and there's there's been people had, that have had good and some people that have had like don't seem to get any results and and so on and so forth and we need to do a lot more of it just to find out how well it works mm -hmm. yeah, and why why when it works it works and why when it doesn't work it doesn't work mm -hmm. yeah. we just don't know enough about yeah, that Courtney is making ashes for for sale now right you could send in and he'll make them up and potentize them but I thought you said it was better to do it right from the pest on your property well, I'm probably send in the, send send in the pest okay. and then have him because he can take it to D8. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It probably works better at D8. Mm -hmm. To use just the ash mm -hmm. probably doesn't work as well as the homeopathic. Mm 